Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. For the second video of today, earlier on, I uploaded a Chelsea FC news video for you guys to feast your eyes on when you wake up in the morning, sipping your coffee or whatever it is you do when you're watching these videos. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you guys watch these in bed? You watch it on the bus? You watch it on the train? Hopefully not when you're driving to work because that would be dangerous. But let me know when and where you watch these videos and where you're from in the comments down below because today's video is all about building community. It's all about coming up with a balanced discussion for something that needs to be addressed. Hence the title of this video. And a lot of people, like a lot of friends of mine that I talk to this about this kind of thing with, they say, you shouldn't address it, it gives fuel to the fire, it allows these people whose voices are currently being projected through social media or through various different outlets, it gives these guys a louder voice. But at the same time, I'm very well aware that we have probably the biggest community in the world right now of Chelsea fans are watching this channel, which is pretty special and I'm very proud of what we've built here together. As a Chelsea fan, I've been a Chelsea fan my entire life. To give you a bit of background, my dad used to go to Chelsea for 20 years before I was born and then Benson comes along and all of a sudden the old man's got responsibilities. He can't be going to Leeds away anymore. He's got to be looking after his baby. So as soon as I was old enough to know anything, I've been a Chelsea fan. And I remember going to my first game in the previous millennium and I absolutely fell in love with it. I was adoring football from the moment I knew any better. And there was always only ever going to be one club for me. It's Chelsea Football Club. The way that I've grown up, it's always been a roller coaster. You know, when I was nine years old, you get taken over by a Russian billionaire. And I didn't even really know what a billionaire was at this point. I was just like, blimey, okay, so... I see that player playing for this team and now Chelsea are going to go and buy him. We're going to be able to buy all of these players from all over Europe, all over the world to build a team, to create a dynasty, to create a successful football club who win trophies nearly every single season. That has been my life as a Chelsea fan. The key thing for me has always been it's lovely and I said that word a lot in my Chelsea news video today but it's so nice to get these affiliations and these loves for certain managers, certain players and then all of a sudden, just as the roller coaster of Chelsea Football Club is, these managers get sacked or these players leave the club and we're sat there with our heads in our hands thinking, what next? Like, surely it can't get as good as when we won the double one around Ancelotti. Surely we're not going to win the Champions League again. And then we remember that this is football and anything can happen. And what we're currently seeing at Chelsea is what I would consider to be stage two of the Roman Abramovich project. We've seen 15 years or 16 years or whatever, where we've had chopping and changing. We've obviously had everything's happened behind the scenes with the academy. We've built something and now we're seeing the fruits of that labor from Abramovich's investment in the young academy and the growth of Chelsea from the roots of the club. We're seeing that now. And it's got to a point where we've been through some of the best managers in European football. We've won a lot of trophies, but there's never been stability. There's never been this feeling of, right, this is the overall project underneath what you see on the surface. And we're going to pick a man who takes the club through all of these times, whether it starts off a little bit rocky and unsuccessful. We know that the passion and the love and the investment behind what's being done at Chelsea is all being done with the overall goal to create a club who are competing on every single level at the highest level. When Frank Lampard came in last season, the way I saw it was we're fed up of going through all of these managers in Europe and they try and print their style in, but it doesn't work. And then for whatever reason, there's a disconnect between the board, the owner, the players, and then the managers. Something doesn't quite click and then click. Manager's gone and we start and we rebuild again. What Frank Lampard represents for Chelsea Football Club, for anyone who's followed this club for any period of time, Frank Lampard is Chelsea. You know, the man bleeds blue. He wears his heart on his sleeve. When he wasn't at Chelsea, he was still keeping an eye on everything going on at Chelsea. He speaks so from such a warm place of love about our football club. And when it comes to who it is who's the right man to carry Chelsea through into this next stage of our development, there's no doubt in my mind that Frank Lampard is that guy. However, I can already get see you. I can see you typing your comments now. Oh, but he's not good enough. He's 
He was great as a player, but he's a man. This is what this is where this whole thing comes in. Frank Lampard is a young manager. He's got his dream managerial job within 12 to 14 months of even becoming a manager. A lot of that is down to the profile that he built up as a player. He was one of the best, if not the best, central midfielder in the world. So when you have that kind of history, you do get fast-tracked towards the top. It's like there's some football pundits who I don't really think are the best football pundits, but because of their playing career, what they say holds value, even if they deliver it in the most boring way possible. So this is football. This is business. This is life. It's sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that's something that's the same for anything in business and social and life, whatever it may be. But at the moment, what we're seeing from the Chelsea fan base, in my mind, and again, like everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Everyone is entitled to believe that Frank's the right man or Frank is the wrong man. The issue that I have is the way that this is delivered. It's the way that it's targeted. And the reason why I've made this video is because if you are one of those people who has like a footballer on Twitter as your profile and I don't know, like it's not just football Twitter, it's a lot of people. I'm seeing in my DMs every day on Instagram, I get people telling me how angry they are at Frank, how angry they are at Mason Mount, how angry they are at this and that. And I'm thinking like, blimey, do we not have enough things to be angry about in the world? Like, you just look at the United States, like they've got two absolute like plonkers debating about who's going to be the next president. And I'm like, there's a lot of things to be angry about in the world, but is, is Mason Mount really doing anything that bad to make you this upset and this angry? And it worries me, you know, I actually worry about some people because I just don't understand how people can see a bad performance from a player of the club that they supposedly love and they can see a bad performance and then all of a sudden, like... They, they, they want this player to never play for the club again, or in, in some cases I even see people are like wishing death upon Lampard or upon an individual player. And for me it's absolutely crazy. And I want you to ask the question to yourself. If you are one of these people who likes to just go in directly attacking personally some of these players, even Kepa, you know, I, I sit here and I say bad things about players' performances, but I never make it personal. I never make it like... They should never play for Chelsea Football Club again. Because I understand that the reason why I love Chelsea is because I want the club to do well. I, of course, when we lose, I, it makes me upset and it does affect my mood on a day-to-day -day basis. That's life, you know, I'm invested in this sport more than anything in the world. But one thing people need to realise is if you're a Chelsea fan and you want to direct this hate towards all of these players online, social media is one of the biggest driving forces in the world right now. It's one of the biggest sources for news. People read things online and it does get to people. Whether you're a footballer making millions of pounds per year or not, these things impact players. And the message that I want to get across is, if you want these guys to be playing better, surely there's a better way to deliver your message about what you think of their performance than wishing death upon a man or wishing them to never play for the club again and you hate them and you hate their family and all of this stuff. I just find it absolutely crazy. I know it's something that we're not going to get rid of because the way the world works is so many people are fighting for a place under the sun. So many people are trying to be heard. So many people are trying to get attention in whatever way possible. And the way that this works is it's all about energy. And it's why I wanted to make this video today addressing it because I believe that GBFC is a place of positive energy where we all love Chelsea Football Club. We wanna revel in our victories. We wanna analyze our mistakes. We wanna to be together when we lose and be together when we win. With these people, a lot of people online, they only wanna be around for the negatives because it's the only way that their voices get elevated to a position where anyone gives a sh** about what they're talking about and it's the only way they're gonna listen. I wanted to make this video today to try and get you to look at it from a different perspective. If you are one of these people, yes, it's okay to have an opinion saying a manager's not good enough or a player isn't good enough, but the way you deliver that message is very important. And a lot of the reasons why, I think particularly Kepa, might not be having a good time of things right now at Chelsea. He's a very young man. He's grown up in this social media world and he sees all the hatred that's being directed his way, often in a very personal manner. And it, it, it stays in your mind, you know? This energy is very strong. It doesn't make any sense as to why we'd wanna create this within the Chelsea community. I understand that people aren't always gonna agree with what I say. I know that I'm not always gonna agree with some of the comments that I read that you guys say. But the way that we talk to one another in the name of football, can we please just make a bit more effort to be slightly more rational, slightly more logical and just outright more respectful, to be quite honest. It's been very difficult for me 
looking through a lot of the responses to what I'm saying, looking at some of my messages and seeing genuine anger and frustration sometimes towards me, even though I'm just sat here in my flipping room with a sign behind me and neon lights making videos about our club. It's difficult, you know, and I want this place, whether Chelsea are winning, losing or drawing, I want this to be a positive place where we look to see how we build for the future and to keep it less on an energetic level and more on a footballing level, Yes, I'm aware that right now Chelsea need to be doing better. I don't even want to spend too much time saying why we're not doing very well. We don't have a full strength team. We've got a young team. We've got a load of new players that have hardly ever played together before. Please give it some time. It's three matches into the season. We've only really lost one of them. Yes, we lost on penalties against Spurs, but if we'd have won that penalty shootout, Hardly any of the crap that I've been seeing would have happened. And we've got to remember, a penalty shootout is a lot is a lottery. You know, you could be Barcelona playing against flipping Fleetwood Town. Fleetwood could beat Barcelona in a shootout if they hit better penalties. It's simple as that. So I wouldn't be too stressed right now. In a few weeks' time, if Chelsea is still struggling and we're not winning matches, I'll be the first one to say something needs to change. But as of right now, Frank Lampard is our manager. He is someone who I absolutely adore, and I know a lot of you guys do too. We need to back the manager. We need to back these players instead of jumping on Mason Mount's back for missing that decisive penalty. We realise all the stuff he's done at Chelsea Football Club in such a short period of time, at such a young age. We back the boys. We put belief into this team. And let's spread some good messages. That is pretty much the overall message of what I wanted to make this video for today. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. As I said at the beginning, I'd love to know whereabouts in the world you're watching from, how you got into loving Chelsea in the first place, so I can get to understand you guys a little bit more as well. Subscribe if you're new, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links are in the description below, and I'll catch you all tomorrow with a brand new video, maybe even two. I said this month's going to be a good one, I wasn't messing about. Come on you blues.